Thanks for joining me today. Um, our talk is going to be about implementing software solutions in your business. Um, my wife and I own My Amazing Maid in Columbus, Georgia, and we have been in business, I guess, since 2013, so about six years. Um, we clean about 500 homes uh, a month, and through the creative use of software, we've been able to um, continue to grow our business without adding a lot of administrative staff. And so we've done a pretty good job on uh, finding the right types of software and implementing it into our business successfully. And I want to talk to you today about how to do that and how to do it in a way that uh, creates a, a little less pain than, uh, than it could. So why do businesses, why do small businesses, and particularly cleaning businesses, um, implement software solutions? Well, I think most people will understand the first one, and that is it helps you to organize your workflow and ensure that jobs are completed on a timely basis and that payments collected. Um, that's why most of us started with a software package in the cleaning business, uh, because of scheduling. And as we grew, it became too cumbersome to use paper. As you move on through your business and your business matures, you're going to find that you want to create um, a simpler way for employees to do things. I think one of the, the one of the tasks that comes to mind um, with us is uh, payroll. You know, creating your timesheets, and we used to do everything you know on paper. And then once we were able to automate that, man, it was a huge savings, um, both in time and expense, um, to get people paid. Create and follow up on sales leads. Um, you know, in our business, we use uh, a piece of software to help us with our emails. Um, so we do a lot of email marketing. We send out newsletters to our clients. And we're able to create um, email drip campaigns. Um, and we're able to follow up on in with interested clients or interested prospects uh, to make sure that nobody, you know, falls between the cracks. And so that's another reason why cleaning businesses choose to implement software in their business. Helping to manage the customer relationship. Um, there are some specialized software out there that helps do that. Uh, a lot of people you know, are able to do that through their scheduling software. But another good reason to, um, to, to have software uh, in your business. Increase, uh, increase efficiencies in your business. So finding easier, less expensive ways to do things, I think that's a big one, especially... Uh, in a business where we are fighting, you know, margin. I mean, we want additional margin, and we've got a lot of pressure with uh, wages increasing, and maybe not necessarily being able to raise our rates like we would like to. So, um, so having uh, an automated way of doing things certainly can help uh, increase the profitability of your business. And the last thing, and I and I mentioned this lastly, but. Of course, it's a big part of why we all want to do automation in our business is to create a competitive advantage. So I think you know one of the simplest things that we do that creates a competitive advantage over um, a lot of our customers, or I mean a lot of our uh, competitors, is being able to text uh, our customers and let them know we're coming, um, or let them know that we will be here tomorrow or whatever. And, um, and so that's one of the things that people implement uh, in order to create a competitive advantage. But I will tell you, if you're spending $100 a month to, to um, create an advantage or a perceived advantage uh, over your competition, it's a temporary advantage because sooner or later, they're going to implement something similar. So does it mean that it's not important because it can help you get ahead at the time? Um, but just realize a lot of times if you're implementing software just to, to help you get ahead of the competition, the barrier is pretty small for them to, uh, to not be able to catch up to you. So we have a, a very um, disciplined approach when we implement software in our business. And I think it comes a little bit from my background. I was in the, the cable business, in the broadband business for a long time. And the amount of data and the amount of customers that we had were in the hundreds of thousands. So you really had to be careful. You had to, to um, be very disciplined in how you do things. Um, but a lot of that discipline translates to a small business as well as, well as a large business. So, um, so I think that's a good, a good thing. Um, so 
the first thing that we do is you got to make the business case. Okay, so what business problem is the software going to solve? There's a lot of cool stuff out there, and there's some other there's some other software that I would like to use in our business that we just don't have that business problem or a su sufficient a sufficiently large business problem to solve yet. Um, yeah, it's coming down the pipe maybe, but it's not there yet. So you need to understand what business problem um, is the software going to help you solve. The next thing, which I think is the most important part of all of these, is is there going to be a return on investment for using the software? We don't pay, we don't spend money on any software in our business. All of our software I look at as an investment because for every dollar we spend, we get multiple dollars back each month. And I think that's the mindset that you want to make sure that you have when you are looking for and you're uh, implementing new software in your business. And for that matter, all of these same steps can be used for implementing new processes and procedures in your business. There are a lot of talks going on during the Made Summit that... Um, that may want you to, to implement something new in your business. And you need to make sure, is there a return on investment for, for doing that? Same with the software. And the next one is, is it the right time to implement this solution? It can be the coolest thing out there. It could save you, uh, you know, a lot of money. But if it's going to take your business down because you're in the busiest time of year, you're understaffed, you really just don't have the people on hand to help you run the business, is that really the right time to implement the solution? So, you know, make your business case, um, you know, figure out what the problem is you're going to solve, make sure that you're going to get a return on your investment, and then also before you go and you, and you launch, make sure that it's the right time to implement that solution. Now, how do you, you determine the return on investment? Okay, so first of all, let me say there is a financial way to do that. There's a you know, mathematical way. We aren't really going to go into that too much because in a small business situation, the return on investment should be so large that it's you can almost just eyeball it and see, you know, are you getting a return? And I'm going to show you just a simple way to do that. Um, the first thing is with most cloud-based software solutions, which is really what we're talking about, the, the old, you know, do you have software on your computer? Uh, that's really, you know, that's sort of out, out of date today in most uh, business software for um, small businesses. So we're talking about cloud-based software solution. There's um, very little money up front that you spend. You don't really buy anything. You, you are a subscriber. And so you're just looking at what is the monthly subscription cost. And then the next thing is you, you need to see an immediate positive return on investment. Almost day one. Okay, maybe not day one, but certainly month two. You should be seeing a return for the money that you're spending. If you can't pass that test, I'm not so sure that it's the right software to implement at this time. But basically, the way that you're going to determine, you know, what is your ROI or is do you have a sufficient positive ROI is to take a look at the monthly gain from the investment that you're making versus the monthly cost of the investment. Okay, so... Let's just walk through that as an example. Let's say that um, a software package that you're going to use is going to cost you $100 a month. And let's just say, for instance, it's something to help you onboard employees. It's $100 a month. Okay, how much time is that going to save you when you're out hiring employees and, and bringing them on uh, staff? If it takes you an hour for every new employee that you bring on board and you have to bring on three every month, that's three hours of your time. What are three hours of your time? You know, what's that worth to you? If your time is worth $100 an hour, that's $300. So you are spending $300, or you're spending $100, you're getting $300 back. So, you know, you've got a $200, um, you know, ROI per month. So basically, you're doubling your money. You're spending $100, and you're making $200 on it. That's one way to look at it. That's an easy way to do an ROI. You can do it in your head. And if you don't understand the what the return on investment is going to be or, or how to calculate it, it is a very, very common way that software is sold today. And so just talk to the vendor. Say, you know, ask them, how can I determine what my ROI is going to be or what do you expect my ROI to be? 
and they can tell you either in terms of labor savings or cost savings or additional revenue. So, you know, use your vendor and um, get them to help you understand what your return on investment is. But just to, to go back over that again, you should see a positive return on investment certainly within the second month. If you don't, maybe it's not the right time to, um, to implement that package yet. What I think is the probably the most important step, and, and we have it listed here as step two, but the most important piece to implementing software is your vendor selection. And the reason why is because most small businesses don't have um, the expertise on hand to, to really go in and research a lot and to, uh, to understand exactly you know, what they're implementing. So I think vendor selection is just huge, hugely important. Um, as you as you go to implement uh, new software. The first thing I look for is an industry expert. Are we seeing this vendor at the trade shows that we're going to? Are we seeing them show up um, in some of the things that are being written? Um, if I go to their website, you know, is it a professional website? Do they have blog posts? If I read them, do I think that they understand our business? Some of our vendors um, actually own cleaning businesses, so they really do understand our business. So I look for industry experts. I think that's the most important step here. Next is, do they have the ability to grow with your business? Okay, And, and sometimes you have to look, well, I don't know if they have the ability. I don't know if, what their financial situation is. But do they have a track record of growth? Um, did they start off with three people and now they've got 15 people two years later? Uh, and you know, and they're growing as the number of customers are growing. Do they have a good business model? So as they get larger, they're may- being able to reinvest into their business. And some of these, the only way you're going to know is just to have a, a conversation with the vendor. What's the impact going to be on your current business process? Um, I think this is huge, and you're going to have to to talk to the vendor about it and understand. Because the vendor is going to, uh, usually, what you're hoping for, is their software is going to make you um, follow best practices in the industry. And so you need to look at what those processes are and see if you're willing to to go that step or um, or maybe you're not ready for that yet and you need to back up. Can their software be integrated with other software? I think this is big. you know, you don't need to necessarily know what these terms mean, but you might want to look them up. Do they have a public API, which just involves, you know, what are their links from their software to other software packages? Or do they use Zapier, which is another way that you can link your software to other packages? Um, and integration is really important today, and it's going to be more important tomorrow. I, I, this probably says a lot about me, but I, I hate entering new customer data. I just don't like it, you know, and I should be jumping up and down and ecstatic because we've got a new customer, but I just don't like the tedious detail of what you have to do to enter customer data into our systems. And we have multiple systems that it has to be keyed into. We've got um, a system that does estimates. We've got a system that is our scheduling system. We've got another piece of software that um, sends out our newsletters and does some of our follow-up, does some of our drip campaigns from from marketing. Um, So there's several different places that that information has to be entered. Well, we really started paying attention to that uh, a year or so ago, and we now have all of our software is linked either through an API, so when someone goes in and does an online estimate, it automatically updates uh, our scheduling software, or through Zapier, so it, it, it's using that, that data and it sends out sort of a link to another software package and updates that. So when a customer enters their information now to get an estimate in one of our systems, it updates all my other systems. And so that's a big time saver. And certainly, you know, going back to the ROI helps us have a, a really good ROI. But it really just takes a problem off that, you know, solves a business problem that I just don't enjoy doing. What kind of customer support does the vendor uh, offer? Um, Today, a lot of the customer support is through chat. Um, If you haven't used chat for customer support, I I think it's super efficient and it's the way to go. 
Um, you know, but can you reach somebody on the phone if you need to? Because sometimes, you know, you do have an emergency and you've got to be able to call. So, um, so do they offer great, you know, best of class customer support? It's real important when you're, um, you're really, it's not just that you're going to spend a lot of money on software, but you're going to, um, it's going to become an integral part, a partner in your business. So you want to make sure when you have a problem that you can get support. You can read reviews, and I think this is a great place to go, especially you know early on in the process, trying to figure out which software you want to use. And there's a there's a website out there called Captera, and that's really sort of like the Google business listing is to cleaning services. Captera, really, I I I don't think I've ever looked for a piece of software that they did not have reviews on, and um, so that's a great place to start and. I'm not as much interested in the good reviews as I am the bad reviews. Where are people having problems? And I need to understand, is that something that's important to me? And then secondly, is there a reply to it um, from the company, from the vendor? How did they handle it? And lastly, you know, do I need to make sure I address that issue uh, with the vendor? So, um, um, so I think that's super important is to do a good job, you know, taking a look, a look at the vendor reviews that are out there. The next is, can you get a couple of references or maybe, you know, somebody who's using that software that you can, you can ask about, um, and, and just really understand, you know, are they satisfied with it? What are the problems that they've had? You know, is it something again, is that, uh, is that a deal breaker for you or, um, is it something that you think you can, you know, work through? So these are all real important steps to try to choose, um, you know, the vendor to provide software for your business. And like I said, this vendor is going to be a lot more than just a, it's not just a vendor relationship. They are, they're going to be a partner um, in your business because many of these software packages that we use are so totally ingrained in our business that the pain to, um, to leave and, and switch to another vendor is pretty high. So you really need to make sure you're doing a good job up front and choosing the best possible vendor you can. Next, um, you need to create an implementation plan. And I know you're sitting here thinking, gosh, you know, it's just, you know, me and three other people. Why do I need an implementation plan? You know, our business is based on planning. Every day we go out to clean homes. It's just cleaning a house. We've cleaned it 10 other times, but we have to have a plan when we go in there to clean and you know implementing software is very similar you need to have a plan on your implementation even if it's just one page long um, you know just certain things you want to cover is who's going to manage the implementation you know somebody needs to be responsible on your end do they have time to implement the software is it a good time if you're working on taxes um, it's probably not a great time to uh, you know start with a changing your business from paper to um, to, to an electronic medium. So you want to make sure that you have the time set aside to implement the software and understand how much time that's really going to take. Next, is it possible to do a partial rollout of the features? And I call this sort of the 1.0, 2.0 approach. I really prefer to roll out software like this. And so a lot of software that we use can do a lot of different things in your business. You don't have to implement them all at one time. I think it's um, it's a lot to understand, a lot to grasp for the employees if they're going to be using the software. So I like to to roll out some key features, and then you know get where everybody's using it. You've got um, everybody's happy; they're seeing the benefits of of using the software, and then you can add additional features as you go. That way, it's a lot easier for the group. To, um, to be successful. What's your plan to roll out the software to the user? So, you, so there's two pieces to this. You've got to um, install the software, you've got to configure it to your business, but then you've got to uh, roll it out to your employees. So you need to have a plan on how you're going to do that, um, how you're going to train them, uh, how you're going to get them excited, and we're going to go through some of that in a, in a minute. How's this going to affect your business during the rollout? Um, if it goes south and things don't work well, is it going to take you down? Do you need to be working on this over the weekend 
so that um, you can do a partial rollout on Sunday and test it before you do your full rollout on Monday. Um, there's a lot of things there. Will you have customer support over the weekend if you choose to go that route? So very, very important things to, to understand. Um, you know, and that's why I say everybody needs a plan. You need to at least have thought about these issues you know, before you go do the rollout. The next step, step four, is communicate, communicate, communicate. You need to make sure that your employees are involved. And as a matter of fact, one of the first things you need to do is you need to find out who the champion is. You know, there's always one or two people that work for you who like new things. They, um, they're the ones that have the nicest um, smartphones um, or they are the ones that, uh, you know, when you get some, a new piece of equipment, they want to try it or some new chemicals, they want to be the person who tries it and test it out for the group. So find out who your champions are and spend some time with them early on in the process to help them to understand what you're trying to do and you know what business problems you're trying to solve and get their input because you know they're in the field. They they can give you really good input um, as to you know whether they think that's an issue or that's not. And then you need to work to create employee buy-in before your implementation. So, so the first thing is you get the champions uh, involved. You get them to understand everything. And then when you have that company meeting and talk about, you know, you're going to roll out, you know, tablets in your organization or whatever type of software you're going to roll out, that the employees, that you get those employees to buy in. And the champions are going to be instrumental in doing that for you. Because after that 30-minute meeting is over, you need people that are with them in those cars um, or on the job or um, just sitting around talking in the office to talk positively about what you're trying to implement. So it's really important to, to find the champions and then you know, work to create employee buy-in. Um, when you're talking to your employees, you want to go through the business justification, why you know, you've decided to, to roll out the software, what you think you're going to get from it, how it's going to benefit them. I mean, you know, employees want to know what's what's in it for me, um, what's in it for my customer. You know, how are they going to benefit? Do they do they think that's important? Um, you need to get them excited, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this. But you know, this should be an exciting part of your business. So make sure that you're you're spending time and effort to to get folks excited about what you're doing. I can't say this enough but I'm going to try. Um, you've got to over-communicate. You've got to talk to your employees about what the, the time frames that you're, you're going to you know, use to roll out the software. You've got to talk about what the risks are, you know, because if you have to stop the implementation in the middle of it, they need to understand why. You know, that you're not failing, that there's a risk there and, and that you're not going to put the business at risk because of that or you're not going to make their day miserable because, um, you know, something that's not working correctly. So, you know, make sure they understand that you know um, what the risks are. And then the next thing is, I think it's important to paint the picture of what life looks like after you've implemented the software. What is their day going to look like? Walk them through it, you know, walk them through what's going to happen. Talk to them about how it's going to make their day easier or it's going to make the customer's life easier, or it's going to be good for the business, or by the saving money, you're going to be able to do more for them. All of these different things create employee buy-in, and it's super important anytime you roll out software, or like I said, even a new process or procedure. And then let's, let's talk a little bit about process improvement. I mean, that's step five is, you know, you need to understand and analyze how your processes are going to change or improve. One thing about software is it's somewhat rigid. I mean, it may appear that you have a lot of flexibility, but at the, at the end of the day, no matter what software you purchase, there's going to be limitations to what you can change. And you probably are either going to, A, have to find a, a workaround in, in something, which is not really the best way to do it, but, but, but everybody has to do it sometimes. Or B, you're going to need to change your process or your procedure so that the software will work correctly. So you need to understand what those changes are going to be. The next thing is, can any of those processes be changed before the implementation? Um, so if there's something that you could go ahead today and do in your business, uh, even manually, 
um, before you implement software that's going to take over, you know, I would I would highly recommend doing that first, and then you can um, roll out the software because the process, you know, you've gotten used to that. You know, a, a person can only have so much change at any one time. So, you know, sort of getting some of the change out of the way before you take this big bite of change um, with this new software is really a good thing to do, in my opinion. And then again, make sure the team is ready and that they're bought in. You know, make sure that um, everything's ready to go. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to, you know, you know, deal with employees that don't really want, you know, this change to happen. Sometimes you still have to do it, but if that's the case, you want it to be just a couple of employees and not 15. So, um, so make sure the team is ready and they're bought in before you move forward. And then set up software. So we're now, we've, we've done our homework. We have picked a vendor. Um, we have prepared our team. And now we're ready to start, you know, working on the software and customizing it to our business. The first thing I would recommend is if there's a free trial period, and in most cloud-based software there is a free trial period, take it. Okay, you may not get too far with it, but at least take it and do some training and understand. It's as much about understanding the software vendor as it is uh, understanding the software itself. Is the software intuitive? I mean, I think if so the software today should be super intuitive on how to use it. And you can find out some of those kind of things during the free period. Always read the directions. I mean, I know you've heard that before. Um, and in this case, I think that translates to do the training. Most software companies today have a lot of training videos out there. They have blogs. They have different ways to, to get that training to you. Um, depending on the complexity of it, they may even do some training in person. Um, you've got to do all the training. If you want to be successful um, in, in implementing uh, new software in your business, you have to go through the training. It's super important. And I know a lot of times we don't have time to do that. But again, that goes back to if you don't have time to implement it properly, maybe it's not the right time to do this in your business. Does the vendor have a Facebook support group? I think that's a great question to ask because if you can go ahead and get be a member of that group, uh, again, you can find out what problems people are having. I always think it's just great to look at the problems and how they're being solved. And if you think that's going to be a problem in your business, um, that you know, understanding the problems I think gets you um, to help you understand the software better than understanding all the positive things it'll do. I mean, all the positive things are great, but uh, but you need to understand, you know, some of the cons that are going to happen. Ask questions. You know, spend spend a lot of time um, with customer service or their support team asking questions on how things are done. And then you need to keep the software vendor accountable. I mean, if they um, if they need to get more information to you, they need to get that information to you. Um, you still, at this point in time, you've got time to change course. And I know you've put a lot of legwork in and a lot of homework. Um, you've done the training. But if you don't feel good about it, this is still a, you know, you still have time to, to change vendors or at least go look at another package before you move forward. Um, so I think that's super important to understand is, you know, you haven't committed yet. Um, once you roll this thing out, that's a different story. But you're still um, in the in the rollout process. So if you need to, if the vendor's not doing what you need them to do, you still have time to change uh, course. Ensure your data is clean. I mean, that's something that um, that we spent a lot of time in, in the cable business. We spent a lot of time because you had hundreds of thousands of records, and you know the amount of data that would get kicked out when you were trying to. Um, to move data from one package to the other it was it was extraordinary, and somebody had to manually go in and fix those things. Well, you know, our data we don't have as many records. Maybe we have a few hundred, maybe even a few thousand. But make sure your data is clean. Um, you can do that usually in uh, Excel. You can um, you can take data out of one software package or ever how you're keeping it. Get it into Excel and then clean it up before you implement you know, a new software where you're going to be giving them customer data. 
I think it's super important as part of the um, setup procedure. Mitigate your risk. Okay, there are going to be risk involved. Um, for instance, you know we um, we use a um, texting software that allows us to text through our business phone number. One of the risks is when we change vendors recently is it was going to go down. I mean, you, there was there was going to be a period of time when you customers couldn't text us on that phone number, and you know we could have rolled that out in the middle of the day. Um, fortunately for us, we're on the East Coast, they're on the West Coast, so we chose a time where we rolled it out at five o'clock on a Friday, so we aren't getting a lot of conversation, you know, calls or text. And for them, it was still two o'clock on the West Coast, and they were able to get us up and running again by seven o'clock. So, but you know, we mitigated our risk and the fact that we didn't do this in the middle of the day and take everything down. So you need to understand what your risks are, and then you need to find ways to either eliminate those risks or certainly make them as small as possible. And then go live with a pilot implementation if possible. Okay, so um, so we have that 1.0, 2.0 approach where we aren't going to implement all of the features at one time, but you know during this trial period or even if you're having to pay for it, just you know, go ahead and get enough customers in there that you can see how it works. And maybe that's just you and, and your staff as, as sort of sample customers so that you can see how it works and you can do a few things to make sure it's working properly before you roll it out with all your customer data and, and take that risk on. So, you know, going live with a pilot imp implementation, I think is ideal in, in a lot of cases. And then after you do that, analyze it. You know, what worked? What didn't work? Is there something that we need to fix? There's a lot of things that you can do there, again, to mitigate risk so that when you do roll this out company-wide, um, that you're able to, um, to, you know, to ensure that you're going to be successful. Let's talk a little bit about the users. I mean, you know, again, we're, we're talking about communication, 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 and it's super important. But again, we have to set aside time for training with no interruptions. If you're going to roll out something that all of your cleaners are going to use, that's going to cost money. You're going to have to set aside time that you can do real training. It's the only way that you're going to ensure that you're going to be successful. So set aside time for training with no interruptions. Don't try to just wing it. Don't try to just say, hey, you can learn this on your own. It's easy. Sure. I mean, hopefully it is. Hopefully it's intuitive. But spend a little bit of time so that you can ensure that they're comfortable with anything that you're rolling out. Make it fun. That's a big one. Um, one of the packages that we rolled out one time in the cable business uh, was really going to be a, a big change for us. It was going to, um, to, to make it a lot easier for us to solve customer uh, troubles. And um, so we adopted this, uh, this uh, you know, slogan and philosophy is, you know, because it was going to change our business so much, is, you know, you're either going to be part of the steamroller or you're going to be part of the road. But we're going to move forward either way. And we actually went out and rented a steamroller, had the rental company drop it off so that we could take pictures of our team around the steamroller. And then we used that in some of our internal communications, you know, to talk about how we're all on board, we're all on the steamroller, we're moving forward. So make it fun, make it a party, you know, do the everything you can to have the right frame of mind to set the mood so that you can be successful. You need to ensure that everybody understands how to use it on day one. I know that that sounds, you know, like why wouldn't you do that? But I've seen it happen where people just weren't prepared. You have to be over prepared so that when you turn this stuff on, it's ready to go. So uh, make sure everybody understands day one that they are trained, that they have, uh, if they needed a new tablet, if they need a new data plan, uh, if they needed a new computer, whatever it is, that they have everything they need prior to going live. And then you need to be ready to provide support. I mean, some people are going to forget some things. That's just the way it goes. I mean, you may be that person. So make sure that you're ready to provide support. Make sure that um, you're going to implement this during the time that your company is providing support. So, you know, a lot of times we, um, being on the East Coast, 
a lot of the software guys are on the West Coast, and we don't pick up um, support until later in the morning, so 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. So we may not want to roll out something at 7.30 when we don't have any support for it. So make sure you're ready to provide support and that the vendor is ready to provide support for you. And then step eight. All right, we're getting close. Time to go live. On that day, I like to get to work early. You know, I like to be prepared. I like to, you know, I was going to say donuts, but, you know, we're from the south in Georgia. And, you know, on, on big days, whether it's a lot of clients we're going to clean or we're going to do something special, it's Chick-fil-A biscuit day for us. So we go out and we buy Chick-fil-A biscuits. Everybody comes to work early and we get off to a positive start. We make it a fun day. We set the mood. I've said this over and over, but I can't say it enough. It's really important, you know, to to have a great attitude um, and to be demonstrating that great attitude so that people will follow you. Um, so super important to, to make it a fun day. You need to anticipate some of the problems you're going to have, okay? So maybe somebody's smartphone is not going to be able to run the software, uh, hopefully, you've already checked it out. You've made sure they've downloaded the app they're going to use. You make sure that it's you know able to connect. Um, but you know, sometimes you know we have our our cleaners furnish smartphones now. We used to furnish uh, tablets for everyone, and somebody walks in and say, "I don't have a you know I don't have any data left." Um, so that's a problem. So I would have a tablet ready to give them and say, "Here, you can use this tablet until you you know you get more data." So you need to anticipate any problems that you're going to have with your implementation. Make sure the users are comfortable with the software. This goes without saying, but again, everything needs to be done on the front end so that when you go live, none of those issues exist. You need to know if you're going to have any of those kind of issues. You've seen this before. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Can't say it enough. You've got to be available. You've got to be talking you know, about, you know, why we're doing this. You got to paint that picture of what success looks like, what their life is going to look like by doing this. And I know I'm getting excited about some software, but I have seen software, you know, revolutionize our business and help us, you know, to improve where we're able to do more estimates now without talking to customers because it's all automated. Um, it's not that we don't ever want to talk to customers, but it frees us up so that we're not talking to the, the, the prospect that's just a tire kicker, that the, that the customers that we talk to or the prospects that we talk to are the real serious ones that may have a question or two. And so we're able to spend a lot of time talking to them because the phone is not ringing. So again, you know, paint that picture of what that looks like for you and your team. If something does happen, you have a problem, make sure you give it quick attention. Okay, so again, it speaks to being ready that day. You don't have a lot of other things on your plate so that if something comes up, you're able to solve it right away. And so keep the ball rolling. And then the next thing is, you know, create some rewards, you know, for people that use it. Um, you know, gamify it if you can. And what that means is just make it, make it a fun game. And, you know, one of the things that we always, uh, we had a trouble doing we, when we implemented a, a scheduling software, and I think it's a problem for everybody, is, um, you know, we put notes in about a client, and we want those uh, cleaners to read those notes every day before they go out. And we were having trouble of people reading the notes. So, you know, we started putting prizes in the notes. You know, we would put something in there and say, you know, the first team that lets me know that they saw this, I'm buying lunch for you today. You know things like that, and um, and so anything that you can to create rewards, to make it a game, to make it fun, those are the kind of things that you want to do when you're um, when you're going live. The next thing is you've you've gone live, you've got it out there, it, you've been using it for a little while. Now it's time to measure measure your success and recalibrate if you need to. Okay, so first of all, before you can measure your success. You need to understand what does success look like. Does it look like a cost savings? Does it look like a time savings? Does it look like um, an efficiency where you don't have to have as many employees? Does it look like higher customer satisfaction? There's a lot of ways to, me to measure success, and you need to understand what does success look like so once you've rolled it out, you're able to, to measure how you're doing against it. 
If you aren't meeting your ROI goals, you need to understand why. You know, is it a poor rollout? Is was was our goal were our goals too lofty? Um, we just haven't got to that point yet. But make sure that you um, you understand because again, like I said before, we don't we don't pay money for software. We invest in software and we get a return on that investment. And you should be doing the same. And then after you've done all that, you've measured it, you're making sure you're getting your ROI, you know, recalibrate if you need to. If you need to do something differently, do it. You know, again, go back and get that vendor involved. If you're having problems, they're the experts. Get them to help you. And then lastly, celebrate your success. I mean, implementing new procedures or new software always comes with some risk. It's not necessarily an easy thing to do. Um, and so when you uh, when you're successful like that, celebrate your success. Give feedback to the users. Let them know what they've accomplished. Let them know that they're saving money, that you're going to be able to use some of that money to, to give back to them, or you're going to be able to, to buy new, you know, better improved vacuums or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're going to be able to do. So, you know, again, you're constantly trying to get that employee buy-in along the way. Um, and then celebrate, you know, maybe you throw a party um, after a couple of weeks um, and, you know, you celebrate your success. Super important. The last thing that I want to go um, go over is something that I found a long time ago. And I recently found this slide. I, I think it, it may be, um, it's written, um, you know, from England or somewhere because of some of the, the language that it is. But it's perfect. It's perfect for, um, for uh implementing technology and understanding the process that you're going to go through. And so this slide is called the emotional journey of creating anything, anything great. I'm sorry. Um, and I don't care what you're doing. You're going to go through this process. Okay. We used to tease and say, you know, when you're, uh, getting a new VCR, you know, at first you're thinking, oh, it's not going to work, whatever that you were going through the same process as rolling out software. I don't know if everybody understands the the, the VCR piece today, but um, but we'll we'll try something different. But I'm going to start over here on the left side, and you can hopefully you can see my arrow. Um, you know, the first thing you do is uh, you, you found a new software package. You've been to a, a you know you you've been participating in the the made summer, and you're going, man, this is absolutely something I want to roll out. This is the best idea ever. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're excited and you're ready to go. You know, then you, you're thinking, oh, gosh, this is going to be fun. Uh, I can't wait to get started. And then you do the free trial. And the next piece here is, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. I didn't realize that it was going to require five hours of training before I could even start doing, um, you know, the setup. And so you start doing it and you shrink a little bit more. You go further downhill. This is going to be a lot of work. I mean, I was not planning on signing up for this much work. Um, and then if you don't watch out, you sink down a little bit farther to your toes or in the dark swamp of this despair, which is that dark period that, you know, you just think you're never going to get out of it. You know, maybe what's going through your mind at that point in time is, this really sucks. I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's where your vendor comes in because your vendor can build this bridge across the dark swamp of despair and get you back on the right track. Okay, so, you know, they were able to solve my problems. They were able to get it going. Um, it's okay, but man, this still sucks. This is a lot of work. And then, you know, you keep working through it. You keep, you know, plugging along. And then you're like, hey, man, I don't know. You know, let's just call it a day. Take a success and start again tomorrow. And that's okay. Sometimes you have to do those kind of things. Um, and then before you know it, you're all the way up here to, wow, man, this is so great. We have revolutionized our business by implementing this type of software or this program or this procedure. And then hopefully it becomes one of the things that you're most proud of. So no matter what kind of software you roll out, what kind of new procedures you roll out, you do some sort of this emotional journey. And like it says at the bottom of the slide, you know, it's inevitable you're going to do it. And maybe it's even necessary to understand all the different things, all the different emotions to go through. But a couple of key points here is you're going to go through it. 
the vendor can help you get across this bridge, can help you bridge over the dark swamp of despair. And most importantly, 99% of what other people see, they're only going to see how excited you were and how successful you are. They're not going to see a lot of the pain that you're going through as you're implementing. And so don't worry about it. Just go through it, work through it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. Maybe it's going to make me have to change some of the procedures that we use in our business. Maybe, you know, I'm going to have a couple sleepless nights and maybe, you know, stick a toe in the dark swamp of despair. But I'm going to get the help I need because I've done a great job. I've planned. I've selected a good vendor. They're going to help me get across that, get me on the right track, and get the implementation, you know, done correctly. And the next thing you know, bam, I'm I'm successful. We've rolled out something new in our business. We're getting that competitive advantage. We're seeing those efficiencies in our business. Our customers are seeing, um, you know, better customer service. Uh, our employees are happier. Uh, whatever it is, uh, because you had a successful rollout of of your new software. So that's pretty much um, how we do things in our little business. And I hope it was. Um, uh, it was something that maybe you learned a couple of things. If nothing else, you, you know, you've seen that everybody at some point in time goes through the dark swamp of despair. You're not alone. And, um, and you see that um, this emotional journey of, of creating anything great is a real thing. And um, it's just, you know, just part of, of, part of life and, and being an entrepreneur. But I want to thank you for spending um, 45 minutes or so with us. Uh, today and letting us uh, walk you through this and I wish you good luck in your business and continue to enjoy all the different things that we're learning um, and I want to thank ZenMade and, and all the work they put in to, to make this um, Made Summit so successful. So thank you very much.